for today's cup of coffee, we're going to sort of continue the thread where we left off yesterday. Yes. And this is the article about Mount Hermon, uh, Gate of the Fallen Angels, written by J.R. Church, May 1st, 2011. And the link will be in the description box uh, so that I'm not going to have to read scripture and verse and all that stuff. Yeah. And... The reason I continued with this, it is written in a very almost disjointed way. I think that, I think dude must have ADHD and need a little stratera because he went off to, on too many tangents. Mm-hmm. And instead of trying to put it all in one article and making it seem like it was hopping from place to place, it would have been better had he focused on one article and then written other articles as as they came to mind. Right. Okay. But it does have some valuable information in here, so that's the reason I just went ahead and am riding with it today uh, rather than going and finding other articles. Go with the flow. Yeah. Because since then, there have been a lot of better written uh, articles about Mount Hermon in fact, Slightly Michael, yeah, Dr. Michael Heiser has written an entire book that is called Reversing Hermon. Hmm. But now that was in the past two or three years or something like that. Um, so I think that somebody, you know, on the fringe Christianity, uh, you know, somebody had to be a forerunner on this. Yeah. And I'm so I'm not sure. going to poo-poo the works of church because... His articles, regardless of whether they're disjointed or not, could have been a springboard for some of the more recently written articles and books and stuff like that. Yeah. And there's quite a few within the, uh, you know, and like I said, I use the term Christian very loosely, Mm -hmm. um, communities that are taking a lot of these things, such as the book of Enoch and other scriptural points that a lot of pastors they they don't want to deal with it no no they don't and that's the reason that you've got gaping holes in the story because that they don't want to deal with it i don't know if it's a matter that they didn't know how to research it where to research it some of this stuff is very difficult to find Mm -hmm. not as much now as it used to be yeah and you've got people that are just flat out lazy a lot yeah. Of reporters now are lazy. Well, and and Heiser uses the term biblically illiterate, and that's you've got a lot of people teaching it, and they don't even know what it means. Yep. So this is the blind leading the blind. It is the blind leading the blind, and and everybody falling in a ditch, and then they get angry at the other ones who think and are going, "This makes no sense," and then they want to jump down their throat. Mm-hmm which helps no one and then you get people that are wounded by religion and they don't want to listen to anything that anybody else says so hopefully that our people it is a shit show hopefully our people will be open-minded enough to understand that this is presenting a different form a different view from a different different perspective like we do lots of perspectives yeah if it's a pagan perspective if it's a scientific perspective you know different cultures Mm. because you know we're looking for the information we don't care really who had written it right so something thumped out there i don't know what that was it sounded like a big thing i know Anyhow, the oh, things, God. they're always distracting. I did take Stratera today, but it's like I have had stress that's ungodly all the time. But who knows what the fuck that was. It could have been a spook. As, as long as it's not to... coming through the picture window, I don't care. Not yet. I don't care. And if it does, grab the baseball bat over there. I had to... Okay, yeah. Oh, I'd pick up the tripod. No, don't burn camera. No, that's one. <laughs> Anyhow, we got the purse right here. You can smack them. Yeah, I could. I could take my Mary Poppins purse and take somebody out. Yeah, it's got studs on it. It's got some things that will make you hurt. Oh yeah, it's got some weight to it. That's good. Never carry nothing that can't be used as a weapon. 
like those tiny little pocket purses, whatever, the ones that are so tiny, but they're, they go all the way around you. That's just an annoyance. That's something. <laughs> that is something. That's for, a chihuahua bag. That's, for, that's a bag for dogs. That is something for someone else to grab and strangle you with. Yes. That's why you don't wear shit like that. Yeah. Anyhow, this is why your mama always goes out battle ready. So when we left off, we were talking about the uh, Nephilim, which Mr. Church is using that term for the fallen angels. Mm. And I'm rolling with that, even though I do not agree with it. The Nephilim were the product of the fallen angels and humans. It was a matter of tainting the DNA code. Mm. So this that's not new. Right. Uh, anyhow, we'll start back here uh, where they were talking about King Og, who was a giant, and that Moses had written that Og's bed was almost 15 feet long. And, of course, he reigned there at Mount Hermon. Mm-hmm. And going back, this is where a lot of people theorize that the fallen angels fell, mm. was at Mount Hermon. And Joshua wrote, and the coast of Og, king of Bashan, uh, which was the remnant of the giants that dwelt at Ashtaroth and at Edria, and reigned in Mount Hermon and in Sulka and all of Bashan, until the border of the uh, Jeshurites and the Maachthenites. Maachthenites. Hey, I'm doing the best I can. I actually spelled that out, you know, phonetically and still screwed it up. And half of Gilead. Maachthenites. Yeah. Maachthenites. Theites. Maachthenites. There you go. Uh, The border of Shion, king of Hezbon. And this is another thing that screws people up when they're trying to read scripture. Mm. And I don't think I'm the only one. You get to one of these names that you have no clue how to pronounce it and worse, what it means. If you don't know what these things... We do not mean to offend. We are trying our best. If you don't know what these things mean, because all these names have a meaning, then again, you're missing a huge part of the story. Yeah. So, yeah. so how many people have you heard that they're like, yeah, and the ites, and the shans, and the ites... And you're sitting there like, what? What? So, I tried not to be one of those people... All right, them did Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the children of Israel, Shmite. Now, I know that Shmite, Shmite. (laughs) the the latent, recessive German gene came out on that one. (laughs) We are not the only ones that has ever sat there in church and in the back of our brain going, what the hell are they saying? (laughs) Yeah. We're just honest enough to speak it. Not gonna lie, at some most of those points, I was I was already asleep. You sort of zone out. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to fall asleep. Well, you need yeah. some catch up on some sleep in the back row. There you go. And for those of us that have the ADHD, anytime it's we worse. are forced to sit still and be silent, you get it sleepy. is hell. Yeah, we do go. Our bodies just sort of shut, shut down. down. So <laughs> it's like, now. okay, sleep mode activated. <laughs> It says, the tribe of Dan moved to this area during the days of the judges and adopted the Canaanite worship of these angels. It was an ancient idolatry that oppressed or opposed the worship of Jehovah. In fact, Baal and Ashtaroth were Canaanite deities whose origin was Mount Hermon. So these very well could have been fallen angels that they were worshiping. It could have been. And... The book of Judges, well, yeah, I mean, this this is the whole thing that these people, these angels thought that they were, they were undermining God. Mm -hmm. And the thing with Lucifer, he wanted to overthrow God. That's why they were a good idea. No, there was a war in heaven. There was a spiritual battle going on today. Uh, The book of Judges even calls Mount Hermon, um, Baal Hermon. So it's combining the term you know, ball with that. Okay. And it says that namely five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidorans and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Balhermon unto the entering of Hamath. Okay, the fallen angels living on and around Mount Hermon 
adopted a biblical name for the mountain, which was Mount Sion. And Moses wrote, and they possessed Sion's land and the land of Og, king of Bashan, two kings of the Amorites, which were on this side of Jordan toward the sun rising, from Aror, which is the bank of the river Arnon, even unto Mount Sion, which is Hermon. Sion means lofty, whereas Zion means stronghold. Okay. So there's, yeah, you can see one of them is strength and one of them is uh, basically pretense. Yeah. And it says Satan was pushing for a counterfeit of God's plan for man's redemption. And the devil was determined to replace the seed of the woman with the seed of the serpent. Now, this is an aside. This is my notice of scripture. Mm -hmm. Women don't have seed. They have eggs. Yeah. Seed is usually a term that is applied to males. Mm -hmm. Rightfully so. So I have always questioned why do they call it the seed of the woman on this? Yeah, that is. Because seed of the serpent definitely, you know, that is a male connotation as far as the fallen angels. Mm -hmm. Because they were male. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's an oddity there that I'm not... That, that's still a mystery. That's another rabbit hole to go down. Okay, in a book entitled The Gods of the Lodge by author Reginald C. Hopt, Hopt, Hopt. H-U-P-T Jr., described the, what Hopt. he found during his trip to like Mount Hermon in the excavations of Baalbek, renamed Heliopolis by the Greeks, temples were uncovered honoring Baal and Bacchus. The same is true of the site of Sidon. The temple there is named the Temple of Baal of Sidon. But by far of greater importance was the Temple of Baal found at Mount Hermon. Perhaps it would be more meaning, uh, meaningful to you if I, Reginald Hopf, directly quoted from his source, a 1982 edition of the Thompson Chain Reference Bible and it's got fourth improved edition. Really, did we need to know that? Put that in the footnotes for real. <laughs> the archaeological supplement was provided by G. Frederick Owen. And he's got credentials. Owen wrote on page 376 of his supplement the following. Mount Hermon, the chief of the mountains of Palestine, is five miles wide and 20 miles long. It has three peaks, the tallest of which is 9,160 feet above the Mediterranean Sea. For centuries before Abraham's time, the mountain had been venerated in connection with Baal. Hmm. Baal worship was the leading religion of Canaan. On the most high peaks of the country were shrines known as high places, the higher, the holier. Here, groves were planted and shrines erected for <clears throat> worship. Since Mount Hermon towered above all the other mountains in the region, it was the chief high place, the Shrine of Shrines. Canaanites looked to Mount Hermon much as the Muslims face Mecca when they pray. During the summer of 1934, Dr. Stuart Crawford and his, uh, this writer, Reginald Hoft, led a small expedition in which we studied the ancient Baal shrines surrounding Mount Hermon. We located many ruins, and in each case, the shrine was so oriented that when the priests and the devotees were at the altar, they faced the chief Baal sanctuary located at the highest of the three peaks of Hermon. Then uh, We then ascended the mountain and found the ruined temple of Baal, constructed of Herodian masonry, which dated uh, it to just previously <laughs> and during the Sorry. early Christian era. In a low place near the northwest corner of the temple, we excavated and found loads of ash and burnt bone, which had been dumped there as a refuge from sacrifices. Now, during the ministry of Jesus, he and his disciples visited Caesarea Philippi, where the Jordan River springs forth from the slopes of Mount Hermon. And while observing these shrines, Jesus posed the question, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Jesus was standing in the territory of his great enemy, the Satan and or Lucifer and the idolatrous fallen angels. It was the area out of which the Antichrist would arise. Okay. So, yeah, he, he absolutely went and reclaimed enemy territory. And that is what Heiser talks about in his book and stuff. 
and where he says on this spot you know this is where i will build my temple he was talking about the exact spot where the fallen angels had landed Mm -hmm. and that he was reclaiming what was his this is something people don't understand they think it's all this woo-woo stuff not necessarily now this is where we get into some oddities with this we go from mount Hermon to france okay and it's interesting in 1666 that was kind of odd. Yeah. Louis the Fourteenth of France authorized the building of an observatory in Paris to measure longitude, and this was the beginning of the Paris Zero Meridian. And according to the Paris Zero Meridian, Mount Hermon, which is also the ancient territory of the tribe of Dan, is located at 33 degrees east of the Paris Zero Meridian longitude, and 33 degrees north of the equator latitude. Now, this don't mean much to you, but we haven't got to that section yet. That's for future cups. Okay. Other people will know. They're like, oh, I know what that means. 33, uh, a 33rd degree became an important part of Freemasonry, probably due to a history that dates back to the Knights Templar, uh, the French Merovigan Merovingian. You might as well be speaking some alien language. I me. actually put it again in phonetics. Yeah, Merovingian. That's as good as it's going to okay. get. And their family ties we'll with that. to the Danites. To the what? Danites, the tribe of Dan. Okay. All right. Then in night in 1675, England's first astronomer, royal uh, astronomer royal, Sir Flamsteed established a prime meridian in London to rival the one in Paris. In 1725, Edmund Halley, the second astronomer royal, established a second meridian. And then in the mid-18th century, another astronomer, astronomer royal, James Bradley, established a third meridian. Then in 1851, these people, I mean, it's like, what My do they God, do? Just, they just get them, redraw the lines. Yes. This is, again, this is why everybody's confused. Yeah. On everything. All right. Then you've got uh, 1851, another astronomer royal, Sir George Airy. Well, that's a good, nice name for an astronomer. Yeah. Set up a new measuring equipment in the room alongside Bradley. The original equipment, actually, it was 19 feet away. And his, George Aries, eventually became the basis for international time. And you're like, what the hell does this have to do with anything? I'm yeah. getting to that. I'm getting to that. It soon became clear that the world needed to adopt a worldwide standard for the zero meridian. So in 1884, 25 countries met in Washington, D.C., and voted to accept Aries Meridian at London's Greenwich Observatory as the prime meridian. Now, France abstained from the vote because apparently they held a grudge. Yeah, because they're petty. <laughs> they, the they're French, petty asses. The French held to the Paris Zero Meridian as a rival to Greenwich uh, until 1911 for timekeeping purposes and 1914 for navigation. To this day, French cardiographers continue to uh, indicate the Paris meridian on some maps. Thank really God for petty. GPS. They're Thank really that fucking petty. GPS, seriously. In the opening years of the 20th century, a booklet appeared in the Russia in Russia by the title. Now I'm going to put a disclaimer right here. I, this is what this man has written. I am. This is a conspiracy theory that I I'm will not go into. Here. All right. But I am going to mention it because he has written it. Even David Ike talks about some of this stuff. I don't touch that one. It's mm. the Protocols of the Learned Elders of Sion. It was touted as the exposure of a Jewish plot to rule the world. However, its Masonic connection is obvious. The booklet ends with the statement, quote, signed by the representatives of Scion of the 33rd degree, end quote. Note that the name Scion is spelled with an S rather than a Z. The connection with Mount Hermon is obvious. Or not. Maybe not I think he's no. stretching on some of this. See, this is what I'm saying. In his world, 
it made sense, but he should have made separate articles of all of some of this stuff because he got way out there. Yeah, edit, dude. Edit. You're, well, you're, you're, you're a journalist. Edit. Gary Stearman, and I like Gary Stearman. He, he had written a preface to this, and I'm like, dude, you've written many books. Why didn't you help, dude, you know, make this one a little more comprehensive? Maybe he had no idea. Tighten it down. Well, maybe he just wrote it and hadn't read it. That could have happened. Now, Jacob prophesied that Dan would be a serpent by the way, an adder in the path. So that goes back, that very much could go back to that reptilian origin. Yeah, it could. And Moses prophesied a, that Dan is a lion's whelp. He shall leap from Bashan. Now, these two prophecies are remarkable in that they connect Dan with the seed of the serpent, from which the Antichrist will emerge to claim the title Lion of Judah, which will be him claiming a false title. But now we know that, that the devil does what the devil does. Yeah. Now, in the book of Judges, the Danites <clears throat> reloca relocated to the northern reaches of the Promised Land. They settled at the foot of Mount Hermon in the territory of Bashan and ad adopted the idolatrous Canaanite religion of Baal and Asheroth. Eventually, they left for parts unknown and became the proverbial lost tribe. Oh, wow. Yeah. I don't know that that's the only one that's lost. I think there's, there's bunches of them. My God. Once they, again, they, wow. Even here in America, they had found, as far as Native American, that it was, uh, I think that it was some kind of Paleo-Hebrew. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Yeah. And it says that the, uh, the Spartans of Greece established the same religious practices that the Danites had developed at, on Mount Hermon. Greek mythology is an elaborate reinvention of the Danite religion. The Spartans invented a messenger of the gods and called him Hermes, a, ver a variation of Hermon, whom the Romans called Mercury. And again, this is dude's understanding. I have not verified this. He may totally be batshit crazy, but this is what is written. Yeah. Supposedly, Hermes had a son named Pan. The name Pan could be a corruption of the name Dan. Today, the Arabs called Caesarea Philippi Banias, but that is because there is no P sound in Arabic. The older form was Panius, meaning city of Pan from Panion. The name comes from Pan, the pagan god who is worshipped there. Uh, niches for Pan's statues can still be seen. In 4 BC, this area became the uh, tetrarchy of Herod's son, uh, Philippius, who renamed Panius as Caesarea Philippi. Hmm. Hey, I'm doing pretty damn good with some of this. I, this I'm name I'm continued like, huh. until the reign of Nero. The pan, the name Pan means all things, all gods, or all life. Therefore, the Romans built a domed temple to commemorate all their gods, which they named the Pantheon. Which mm -hmm. that's the Loves first it. time that that made sense to me. No one ever explained that to me. Mm. All right, it is a combination of the root words Pan standing for the son of Hermes, and Theo, meaning gods. It is clear that Mount Hermon, with its infamous fallen angels, found its way into the mythologies of many ancient cultures. Solomon had um, something remarkable to say about Mount Hermon. Uh, it says, Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse, with me from Lebanon. Look from the top of Mana, from the top of Shinar and Hermon, from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards. And of course, that is from the Song of Solomon. And Solomon mentioned a lion's den and the mountains of the leopards. This may be a reference to the prophecy made by Moses calling Dan a lion's whelp. It seems that Solomon was aware of the Danite connection to Mount Hermon and used the metaphor of the Danite lion's den. When the Danites first arrived in northern Israel, they conquered the uh, village of Laish meaning lion, and renamed it Dan. The book of Judges reports, and they called the name of the city Dan after the name of Dan their father, who was born unto Israel. Howbeit the name of the city was Laish at the first. All right, Solomon mentioned Mount Hermon in connection with leopards. 
Now, see, this is where dude is going off on another tangent. So just bear with me on this. Okay. Pun intended with the animals. Anyhow. <laughs> it is said that Ham's grandson, Nimrod, Nimrod was not a good dude. No. Wore a leopard skin as a symbol of his kingship. Also, there are paintings of Egyptian pharaohs adorned with leopard skins. Even some medieval uh, European royals wore leopard skins. An ancient Jewish commentary connected Nimrod's leopard skins with the coats of skin belonging to Adam and Eve. Now, see, some of this stuff is within the Jewish mythology and history that we have little access to. Right. So... And anyhow, they say, truly he was a man of might because he was clad in the garments of Adam and was able by means of them to lay snares for mankind and beguile them. Uh, Rabbi Eliezer said Nimrod used to entice people into adulterous worship by means of those garments, which enabled him to conquer the world and proclaim himself its ruler so that mankind offered him worship. He was called Nimrod for the same reason he rebelled against the most high king, against the higher angels and against the lower angels. So he was an arrogant something. Yeah, he had his head up his own ass all right. And Rabbi Simeon said, Our colleagues are acquainted with a profound mystery concerning these garments. Now, this is not the first time I have heard of this as far as whatever Adam and Eve were clothed in, that those were passed down, and that they did have these supernatural powers connected to them. Mm -hmm. But that's yet another cup. I make these, I will allude to things, but I will not go into them fully. Yeah. Uh, We cannot say with certainty that Adam and Eve wore leopard skins, but there are a number of sources that suggest that Nimrod wore a leopard skin. Among them was Alexander Hislop in his work, The Two Babylons. And he said, quote, this custom of taming the leopard and pressing it into service of man in this way is traced up to the earliest times of primitive antiquity. In the works of Sir William Jones, we find it stated from the Persian legends of Nimrod, the father of tamers who built Babylon was the first who bred dogs and leopards for hunting. End quote. As Tamars who built Babylon uh, could be none other than Nimrod, this legend only attributes to his father what, as his name imports, he got the fame of doing himself. So I don't know. It's like, was that a good thing or another thing? If you don't want to take credit for it and blame it on somebody else, is that giving honor to someone else or having them take the blame? Having them take the blame. That's usually how that works. All right, it says, now is, as the classic oh, God, God quiz. bearing the, the lion skin <laughs> is recognized by that sign as Hercules, the slayer of Nemean lion, so in like manner, the God clothed in the leopard skin would naturally be marked out as Nimrod, the leopard subduer. Loves All right, that. it All says right. that also the leopard skin uh, can pertain to the Egyptian gods, but that was apparently not an occasional thing because Wilkinson tells us that on all high occasions when the Egyptian high priest was called to officiate, it was indispensable that he should be wearing as his robe of office the leopard skin. Okay. I told you that it was written in a very circular way. Like, dude, you just said that stop it it had nothing you're confusing my brain it's confusing everybody's brain (laughs) as it is universal principle in all idolatries that the high priest wears the insignia of the god he serves this indicates the importance which the spotted skin must have had attached to it as the symbol of the god himself Mm -hmm. mm-hmm it says early church theologians Iranius and Hippolytus. 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 I got that one. Uh, it's a good, you did good. One. Stated that the Antichrist would come from the tribe of Dan, which was based upon Jeremiah 8, 16. The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. The whole land trembled at the sound of the name of his strong ones. Now, this is interesting. Alexander the Great claimed to be born of the seed of the serpent. 
Oh. I thought that was pretty cool. And then also, uh, there is the possibility that the Roman Emperor Nero could have descended from the Danites. When Nero ruled the Roman Empire, he renamed Caesarea Philippi in honor of himself. Of course he did. For a while, the site of the ancient Danite city was called uh, Neroius, which is the city of Nero. Okay. Now remember, there's the possibility that the tribe of Dan, that their DNA was tainted as far as the fallen angels. That's the point in all of this. That could have been said in a sentence and a half. It really could have. All right. Those fallen angels who descended to Mount Hermon introduced the seed of the serpent into the human race. Evidently, after the flood, they consorted with members of the tribe of Dan, mixing the seed of the serpent into the human genome once again. The first time it happened, God judged the world with water. The next time, it will be by fire. Now, this goes back... Everything's going to go up in flames or or lava. Lava. Now, this is as far as with the reptilians, are there people that are not quite people? Yes. Yes. There are those that are good guys. There are those that are not good guys. It's okay. You think this was confusing? Mount Hermon. That's where the angels (laughs) fell. (laughs) Tribe of Dan went there, settled, got m- messed up with the fallen angels. Their DNA and their genetics became tainted. So they went out and they spread all this stuff other places. Mm. And so these people out there, that's these hybrids walking amongst us. There you go. <laughs> that's it in a nutshell. That's a roundabout way of yeah, saying I, I hate sauerkraut. <laughs> It's mountain speak. That's all right, because what messed me up, not just life circumstances, real lizards. Oh, my God. I went down part of that rabbit hole, which we ain't even, but it messed me up. And it takes a lot, but when you get real lizards, that's going to be coming in a few days, because tomorrow we're going to do simple, because right now my brain needs simple. Everybody else is going, please, God, let her be Dear simple. God, let her. <laughs> so, anyhow. Dear God. Hopefully somebody was able to make some sense of that. And God love him. If this man is still alive, pray pray for him. He needs prayer. <laughs> pray for him. Give him Bless singleness of heart. Give him singleness oh. of thought. So, Bless anyhow. Bless his heart. He's all over the damn track. He is. <laughs> On a happier note, you want to show them what came in the mail today? You can't see it. Bitch, shoot. I got a hat. Bitch, shoot hat. I will wear that with pride. Yeah. Oh, God. And that comes from, you know, I am. No. Down, down. Yes. Over to the right. Right. More right. That's close enough for jazz. That's good. That's good. I'm, I'm a fan of BitChute as far as, uh, is it crowdsourcing? Is that what it's called? Yes. And so I do, you know, this is a small, small, you know, membership, subscriber to it and stuff like that. Small donation. Yeah. On a monthly basis because yeah. I believe in it. Mm-hmm. And the so, fact that they are, as far as free speech, that you can go on there and listen to the forbidden ones um, yeah. that's that's a screw tube has thrown like Alex Jones and David Icke and many other people you know mm. kind of coming to a band thing near you yeah so I do appreciate their opportunity to allow people free speech even if some of that free speech are people being jerks you know yeah sadly it is sad you know and it's it is what it is, and so I was really pleased to get that. Yeah. I actually didn't think that it was ever going to arrive. It actually is a really good quality It's a hat. good quality hat, and I will wear that with pride mm-hmm. and advertise for the bit shoots. So, anyhow, yes. if you have had experiences with paranormal, supernatural encounters, UFOs, aliens, cryptids, uh fallen angels nephilims if you've had experiences with the tainted dnas all those things 
if you've got local regional family myths legends if you too have the ADHDs and are unmedicated send us an email at cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com mm-hmm. know that you're loved know that you're appreciated thank you very much for having coffee with us yes and trying to decipher. I think we needed a Rosetta Stone to make it through Mr. Church's writings. Yeah, buy a subscription to Rosetta Stone. For but that. there are a lot of different rabbit holes. That's the reason I went ahead and read that, because those can be springboards for many people's research on, on different things. Duolingua course. A what? Duolingua course, that dude's writing. Okay. Duolingua, it's a thing that you can learn languages. Oh, on. okay. Yeah. It's like Rosetta Stone. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Except better. Okay. That sounds good. It just, it, he was trying to pack too much in there mm-hmm. at, at one time because there were about 12 different dissertations in that one writing. Yeah. For real. And, and honestly, there have been people that they have spent their entire lives researching some of those points. Mm-hmm. Even if it was a, a matter of the, um, you know, clothing that was made for Adam and Eve. Yes. And what happened to that and, and everything like that. That's an interesting rabbit hole. Even as far as that uh, Methuselah, I can't remember if he was the grandfather or great-grandfather of Noah, that he was alive until right before the time of the flood. I mean, we think of these people as being hundreds of years apart from each other. Nope. Nope, nope. Hmm. Yeah. And Mark Biltz is one that can tell you a lot of this stuff. And I have enjoyed learning for from him for many years. So anyhow, the next cup of coffee, much simpler, cat. much easier to swallow. Make sure the cat is smooth, silenced. Well, the cat's always the cat's his, silenced. His it's he who and all you can see are little eyes looking into the window. That's it. Yeah, that's kind of creepy. It is creepy. <laughs> so we, you all have a beautiful, blessed day, and we'll see you on the next cup. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and most of all, subscribe and click that little notification doohickey. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye.